We know, Jada, we've talked a lot this year about chemical changes, yeah. right? And we know when a chemical change takes place, what happens? There's a new substance. Substance made. Yeah, a new substance is formed. And sometimes that substance may not look a lot different. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just chemically different and we can't tell. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's really, really obvious that a new substance is being made. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're going to look at today. We're going to look at a really cool chemical change. Okay. Um, we're using some chemicals that are big words, but cool reaction. Uh, the first thing we have here, it's called sebacol chloride, and the second one is called hexane diamine. Okay. Complicated sounding stuff, right? Yeah. But it's actually, it's a very common reaction, and once we make the reaction happen, then we'll talk about what it is that we're making. Okay. Okay? okay. And we're gonna pour the hexane diamine in first. Okay. And let's go ahead, let's put some gloves on. You've already got yours, I'm gonna put mine on, and you can go ahead and get your goggles there too. Okay. Because these chemicals are things that we don't really want to get on us. And what I'm going to do, we're going to add a little bit of food coloring. Put maybe just like one drop okay. in there. That'll be enough. In this? Yeah, into the hexane diamine there. Just add a drop. And if you want to kind of swirl that around a little bit and mix it in. And go ahead and pour that into our beaker when you get done. All right. And in just a minute, we're going to add the sebacol chloride. Mm -hmm. But we've talked also about density. Mm -hmm. And these two liquids are actually two liquids with different densities. Okay. Um, the hexane diamine is more dense. It's going to stay on the bottom. When we add the sebacol chloride in, it's going to float on top. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at what happens when it does. Let me grab some, something to get in there with in just a minute. And I'm going to pour this very carefully because we don't want them to mix. If we do it right, we'll have a layer of clear liquid floating on a layer of blue liquid. All right, so if you look at that, you can see we've got our, our layer of blue, we've got a layer of clear, mm -hmm. and then something else is happening in the middle there, isn't it? Yes. What does that look like? Something on the top. Okay, so something's kind of floating on top of the blue and underneath the clear, right? Yes. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach in and kind of grab it and pull it out. Okay. And we're going to put it up over the top of this little spool that we've made. Mm -hmm. And once I tell you to, I just want you to turn that kind of slowly. Okay. And as smoothly as you can. Okay. We've got our little makeshift spool there. Okay. But let me just see if I can grab a piece of that and get it started here. Out and up and over, and if you want to go ahead and start turning the spool, just turn it nice and slow and smooth. Let's get that wrapped around and keep turning. So, what do we have in there now? We had two liquids. Now, what's coming out of it? A solid. Something solid, right? So we know a change has taken place. Mm -hmm. And what happens? This actually is a reaction between these two chemicals that makes something that's incredibly common. And this is actually nylon. Uh, do, you, do you have anything at home that's made out of nylon? Yes, a jacket. Okay, so like a nylon jacket, right? Or a lot of, a lot of people's book bags, and mm -hmm. they even make nylon rope. It's a very, very, very common synthetic polymer. Mm -hmm. But it's made from this chemical reaction. And what we're doing here as you turn that is just making us a little spool of nylon rope. And I'll let you go ahead and keep turning that. It's going to keep coming out as long as the reaction keeps happening. I broke it. <laughs> but, you know, there's still some more chemicals in there and we could make some more if we wanted to, but if you look on our spool here, now we've got a spool of this nylon kind of thread. It's pretty, it's thick thread, but it's basically nylon thread that we've made. And, you know, we could rinse it off if we want to. Now, of course, it's blue because of the food coloring, mm -hmm. and we could make it any other color that we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And just like with your nylon jacket, nylon book bag, they'll dye that nylon material make it different colors. So we could actually, you know, if we if we had, I guess, the machines and the, the capabilities and I knew how to do it, I could take that and make something else out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, here's some nylon rope where it's just little pieces of nylon that have been woven together. But like I say, they use it for tents, they use it for jackets, um, all sorts of different materials and all sorts of different things that they can make out of this simple chemical reaction. Pretty neat stuff, huh? Yeah.